So I've uh, seen an increase in traffic on my YouTube channel and on the Tom's Techniques website. So I assume you guys are spending less time outside and a little more time in the shop. And I've been doing the same myself. Um, for those of you who don't know, I, I, I do this. Uh, I work full time, unlike a lot of these guys that do videos on YouTube. So uh, my free time is kind of kind of dear. And when the summer rolls around, I'm, I'm an outdoor guy, so I spend a lot of time outside. We have... Uh, we have a place in uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula, so I, when I have free time, I'm, I'm not doing videos, I'm heading up there. I put uh, just under a thousand miles on my dirt bike this summer and didn't break it or myself, so that's a good thing. And we always do lots of uh, fishing and uh, hunting, photography, hiking, you name it, shooting. So we have, we have a good time up there. This summer was cut a little bit short because I, I married off my, my oldest son, so we, we spent a lot of time here planning that event so it cut into the up north time a little bit but uh, we managed to get a few things in uh, but anyway that's in the past it's starting to cool down now it's uh it's, it's downright cold up there now the place is shut down for the for the winter at least until we get back up for for snowmobiling so uh if i'm going to be in the shop here i guess i might as well be making some videos um you guys have, are always sending me suggestions on new topics and i, I always write those down so uh, this this next this throughout this winter I'll be making some videos based on some of those suggestions as well as well as a few of my own um, I still have to finish up that uh, clamp knurling tool uh, Project tutorial. I have one more video to shoot for that Covering the heat treatment of the steel parts uh, the assembly of the thing and uh, I'll give a short demonstration on how to use it I know most of you guys have already finished it up, but uh, for for future builders. I'll, I'll get Get that all wrapped up um, today I'm just going to kind of do a quick and dirty video um, I, I'm doing a lot of new stuff I've been away from this for a while I'm using a new camera now I'm still getting used to the uh, sound system I started using last uh, last year and uh, I still have to familiarize myself with the uh, video editing software that's always a challenge so so I'm going to kind of slide into this a little bit at a time so I'll, I'll just start out with a short video here tonight um, whenever I do a uh, video that involves grinding sharpening tool bits on the bench grinder I always get comments from people cautioning me not to get the tool too hot now I understand where this is coming from but as far as high-speed steel is concerned it, it's it's not an issue I, I keep I keep saying that but I still get the video so I thought well I'm gonna take some time and explain why you don't have to worry about overheating high-speed steel. Carbon steel is a different story, and that's that's where this this concern comes from is, is carbon steel. But what I'm going to do is I just put a little together a little uh, uh, demonstration um, on carbon steel versus high-speed steel, and what heat does to it. Okay, and uh, so I think uh, let's go ahead and get started on that, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Maybe we can put some of these things to rest. Okay, so in the uh, early days of the Industrial Revolution, there was no such thing as high-speed steel. The uh, cutting tools back then were made of uh, just tool steel, just carbon steel. It's just iron with about 1%, well, in this case, 0.9% carbon and uh, about 1% manganese. And what, what that made, in this case, is, is called oil-hardening tool steel. All right? it's, uh, this is a piece of drill rod. Uh, called O1. I, I made a little lathe tool bit out of it, heated it up to a cherry red and quenched it in oil. And that results in a tool that's about uh, Rockwell 60 to 62. It's pretty darn hard. So it'll, it'll do a good job of cutting uh, if you uh, keep the temperatures down. The shortcomings of this type of tool bit is, is that it has low hot, low red hardness. Okay, so if the temperature of the tool gets up to around 350 degrees Fahrenheit, it starts to lose its hardness very quickly. So let's uh, see if this thing cuts. I have a piece, another piece of O1 in the lathe here. So let's just see if this hardened piece of O1 can cut the, uh, the unhardened piece. I 
So you have to really be careful not let heat build up. So I'm going to start out with pretty slow feed rate. Keep the heat down. So there we go. We got a piece of 01 cutting another piece of 01. Doing a pretty good job. Now let's see what happens when it gets warm. I'm not going to take it out and grind on it. Quicker just to warm it up with a torch here. Watch, you should be able to see the colors. Now they're starting to turn blue. So that's about 350 degrees right there. Let's go a little hotter. There we go, it's turning brown. So that should have greatly softened the uh, tool bit up. Let's see what it does now. Same settings, same feed and speed. Let's see what happens. And look at the chips turning brown now. There we go, tool bit's gone, that's it. That's what happens when you overheat a carbon steel tool bit. You can see it took the, uh, the nose of the tool right off. So that's, that's a good example of a lack of red hardness. So this is what the uh, machinists back in the 18, early 1900s had to deal with. They had to use very slow feed rates, very low speeds, and lots, lots of uh, coolant. So in the mid-1900s, high-speed steel was discovered. And high-speed steel, it's, it's also, it also has carbon in it. You know, it still has carbon, but it has, carbon is the, one of the minimum alloys. The, there's not a whole lot of it in, in it. It's, I think this uh, piece of uh, high-speed steel here, it uh, has about, yeah, well, actually about the same as the O1, but it also has a whole lot of other elements in it, primarily um, cobalt. Okay, cobalt and chromium and silicon, a few other elements added to this uh, carbon steel greatly increases the red hardness. Now where this piece of O1 steel here as a, uh, starts losing its temper at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, this piece of high speed steel is good up to 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, it has, it has good red hardness. So let's let's see how this this fares on the uh, on the O1. Should do a pretty nice job, right? It's our typical high-speed steel we see. Matter of fact, let's let's speed this up a bit more. We can easily go a lot faster than that carbon steel, and we'll get the feed rate up as well. Okay, there we go. We got. A little chatter going, but uh, blue and brown chips still doing fine. So let's uh, let's heat this baby up. See what happens when we heat it. Heat it up. It's already pushing, being pushed a lot harder than that carbon steel. Let's see how it handles the being warmed up as well. Yeah, this one really going to warm up, okay? It's good to about 1100 degrees. That's a that's a dull red color. So we'll get her nice and warm here. And you can see it's starting to glow now, okay? That's a lot hard, a lot hotter than you're ever going to get at grinding on a bench grinder. Let's see what happens here. Still the same speeds and feeds. But it still cuts the steel, still chewing away at that old one. No problem. Okay? High speed steel has what's called good red hardness. Carbon steel does not. Okay, you can see you're getting the chips are almost white coming up. That's a lot harder than you want to normally push a tool bit. 
but the fact is, even after being heated up to a, a red color with a torch, it still cuts. So uh, we don't have to worry about overheating a tool bit when we're grinding it if that tool bit's made of high speed steel. Well, that's about all I have on this one. Let's uh, clean up the lathe and I'll, I'll see you next time.